I have one year of data. Is it enough or not to train a machine learning model? In this video, I will show you how to know the right answer and what to do when you don't have enough data. Hi guys, I'm Calvin Fernandez, your AI advisor, and welcome to another AI shot. Let's discuss how many years of data you need to train a machine learning model. As we mentioned in a previous video, the more data you have, the better your models will be. However, the amount of data depends on several factors, such as how complex the predictive task is, and the data quality. You can always adjust the type of models that you use, or you may rely on some training tricks, such as transfer learning using synthetic data, or rely on external data to reduce the amount of data that you need to train these models. However, in this video, I want you to think about time and not so much about volume, because while you can control data quality, you cannot control time. By the way, if you want to build great data sets to train your machine learning models, we have an online course, click on the link on the description. So to answer this question, I want you to think about business cycles. Always aim to have a full business cycle in your data. What is a business cycle? Basically, the whole seasonal period that drives your business. For example, the travel industry has yearly cycles with peak seasons in summer and special dates depending on the location. For e-commerce websites, for example, you also tend to have yearly cycles with special dates like Black Friday. So in general, a year is a good indicator of the bare minimum amount of data that you will need to fully cover all the variability in your business. Other industries may have even shorter periods according to their cycles. For example, a disco may have weekly cycles between working days and weekends that is even more dominant than the yearly cycle itself. So you may even find good results with data sets collected over even shorter periods of time for these kind of industries. Of course, the more data you have, the better. But I will set the minimum time frame to collect the data as the full cycle of your business. Now, let's see two strategies to deal with the small data sets when you are not able to collect that much data. But before we move into the strategies, I have a special request for you. If you have gained value from our videos, please like and subscribe to our channel. So, now you tell me, okay, Kelvin, but I just launched my product and I don't have a year of data. I don't have a full business cycle of data. I cannot wait for years before training your AI models to release the product. What can I do? In this case, you have basically two strategies, two options. The first strategy, I like to call it everything is relative, at least in predictions. So make your predictions relative to the current context, to the context that you are seeing now. So all features in your model and the prediction itself get adjusted to, by the current season or by the current context. For example, instead of predicting sales demand, predict sales variation with respect to the previous week. If you want to know, for example, if a user will churn or not, and you have uh, seasonal cycles in this churn prediction, don't use, for example, the user product usage. So how much the user is using the product. Use, for example, how close he is from being to the top user in that period, because maybe all users fluctuate in the same type of usage over the year. By doing so, you will remove the seasonality of your business and you can train with shorter periods of time. The second strategy is to bring more context. So include external data that reflects the different business cycles that you have. Some examples of external data are, for example, weather, mobility patterns, Google Trends, Google Search, among many others. This will let your model know that an increase in search volume for your service means an expected increase on sales. This is just an example. So make sure you include any data that could reflect the different changes on the, over, on the business over your seasonal period of, let's say, one year. Now, tell me in the comments what are the techniques that you use to deal with these kind of short time frame data sets. Remember to like and subscribe. See you soon.